These are the best anti-inflammatory foods unless you have a certain problem. Let's go through the best anti-inflammatory foods first, and then I'm gonna tell you what to watch out for if you have a certain problem. So first of all, let's talk about the anti-inflammatory fruits. Blueberries are one of the best, and that's because of the nutrients that are in the blueberries. They tend to fight inflammation in the body. Raspberries as well. Papaya and pineapple are also both anti-inflammatory, even though they have a higher sugar content than the berries, but because of their enzyme content. So the pineapple contains bromelain, the papaya contains papain, and both of those actually assist with inflammation from the enzyme power. Then we have certain oily foods. They help you to make certain chemicals in your body that quell inflammation. So we're talking sardines, we're talking wild caught salmon, you know, the fatty fish, but we're also talking a good quality olive oil. You need to know the source of your olive oil because a lot of olive oil is adulterated with seed oils, believe it or not, like safflower oil, sunflower oil, and these are very inflammatory. Seed oils are very high in omega-6 fatty acids, and we tend to get too many of those in our diet anyway. You add to that that they tend to be highly processed, you know, using heat and extraction techniques that do damage them in the process. And all of that contributes to inflammation in the body. So I recommend going to little local shops where you know the source of the olive oil. You can find them in any decent sized city and talk to the proprietors. They'll be able to happily tell you about where they source their olive oil and that it is the real thing. And then the other oil that's very anti-inflammatory is coconut oil. You do want to be sure to get extra virgin coconut oil because if you don't, you might have a mold content. The way the coconuts themselves are processed can promote mold growth unless you go for extra virgin coconut oil. Mold causes inflammation in the body because it produces its own toxins. So when you're exposed to mold, you ingest it through a food or you're exposed to it by breathing it in the environment and it gets into your body, it is producing something called mycotoxins. These are waste products of the mold. And those waste products cause all kinds of stress to your body. Certain mycotoxins have been associated with kidney disease, with liver stress, even cancer. So it's very important to take a look at possible mold sources, even in your diet, not just in your home. Grains are notorious for having a mold content because they're stored in silos. It gets damp, it gets warm. There's a nice feeding ground for the mold that may be on those grains to grow while in the silos. And another thing that people don't often think of, one of the reasons you want to choose grass-fed beef is because they're not feeding them these nasty grains. You know, we as humans get the better quality grains in our food supply. A lot of the lower quality things or the things that have visible mold are actually given to the animals. Oh, it's cheaper feed, let's not let this go to waste. So you can actually get the mycotoxins indirectly from your meat. From a spice perspective, turmeric, and garlic are both fabulous at fighting inflammation, again, because of the compounds native to those spices. So use them abundantly in your foods and you will see an anti-inflammatory effect. Now I mentioned that you might want to avoid certain foods that are generally thought to be good for inflammation. If you cannot process one of the chemical components in the food called oxalates, an oxalate is just a chemical component of a food. And this is genetics. Some people are built to process them very easily and other people do not have that ability. So here are some of the symptoms to watch out for. Headaches, urinary pain, genital irritation, joint and muscle pain and stiffness, 
intestinal pain, even eye pain. You might be looking at anti-inflammatory foods because you've got these issues. And if you focus on the foods that are high in oxalates, then you're gonna be up the creek without a paddle because those are actually promoting the inflammation because of the oxalates. One of the biggest symptoms that oxalates can cause is kidney stones. So if you have struggled in the past with kidney stones, you may look at a low oxalate diet. Now, what is considered low? Between 50 and 100 milligrams per day. And if you really have a kidney stone problem, your doctor might recommend even going below 50 milligrams a day. Most people eat about 200 to 300 milligrams of oxalates per day, but it is so easy to go above and beyond that if you're trying to work some of these superfoods into your diet. Foods that are high in oxalates. Raspberries, it's on the list of anti-inflammatory foods, but it's high in oxalates. Beans. Nuts, you know, almonds were on this list of good anti-inflammatory foods, but they do contain high oxalates. So you might have to watch out for that. I know people that juice beets and spinach regularly. And if you do not have an oxalate problem, that's fine. But if you're doing that to help your body and you're just not getting the results, you might take a look at using some low oxalate substitutes. Just search low oxalate diet. And if you suspect this is a problem for you, stick with a low oxalate diet for one week and you'll be able to feel the difference in your body. Add some of these foods back, see if you feel worse. I often talk about listening to your own body and it is the most important skill you can possibly develop. You want to tune in and see what's happening as a result of actions that you're taking. You want your food to feel good. You want you to feel good after you eat these foods. Your exercise should feel good after you do it. You should be energized and enlivened and feel better. So learn to tune in eat those anti-inflammatory foods, but if you need to look for low oxalate versions of those foods, do that as an experiment. Frankly, if you're fighting inflammation in your body, sometimes eating the foods alone don't give you a heavy enough dose. Let's say you don't really like sardines or fatty fish. Well, you can easily take a fish oil supplement, and that's really one of my favorite anti-inflammatory supplements to take. You can use a Nordic Naturals, you can use Metagenics, EPA, DHA. Those are available in my full script site in the link tree. Just search fish oil in the search bar and there will be several brands. Look, I know we're watching budgets for sure, but you don't want to budget too heavily with your supplements. You don't want to not get the quality because if they heat it with processing, if they don't take care to protect it from light, there's different things that must be done when nutritional supplements are made that actually give you the end product that you're looking for. Something high quality is going to have the effect on your body that you want it to have. One of the most common symptoms of inflammation is joint pain. And so if that is affecting you, watch this video and learn more.